Today we're going to be checking out the Rally 600 Portable Power Station from Runhood, which has a very unique removable battery system and also their 100 watt solar panel and testing them both out to see how well they perform. And at the end of the video, I'll give you guys my two cents about this setup and let you know whether or not I think it's a good deal. But before we dive in, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Let's take a look at the Rally 600. There's a nice big display, which gives you some great info, including the remaining battery life as a percentage, input and output watts, and remaining charging and runtime. And it will also tell you which ports are active too. There's two 110 volt, 600 watt AC outputs with a 1200 watt peak. And to the right, there's a power button, which will turn the power station on and off. And beneath that, you get a PD100 port, which can quick charge your USB-C powered devices, or you can also use it to charge the power station. And beneath that, there's a few USB-A quick charge 3.0s and another USB-C output. And to the right of that, there's a DC input up top, which you can use to charge the power station. And beneath that, there's a car style output and a few other DC outputs. There's also a light on the top with a high, low, and an SOS mode. All right, so now we're gonna get into one of the most interesting aspects of the power station, which is something that I've never seen any other company offer before, and that's their swappable lithium battery system. And basically the way it works is this kit comes with two batteries that you can plug into the device, which can power the power station, and then you can purchase more batteries, which you can swap in and out to extend the runtime of your setup. Each battery has approximately a 324 watt hour capacity. So combined that brings the total capacity to 648 watt hours. This is also really important in case you wear your cells out in the future you can just replace them without the full cost of purchasing a new model and expanding the capacity in this way is relatively affordable but we'll touch more on that towards the end of the video another thing Runhood did really well on here is the included accessories and they give you this really nice zippered case for you to store the main charger the car charger a solar cable and the manual and it's really nice that they provide a dedicated bag for all this stuff so it's easy to store and keep all of these cables together so you're less likely to lose them and there's also some more room for you to store some additional cables in there as well we're going to do a quick charging test now that the battery is drained to see how long it takes and now we've got the main charger which brought us close to 175 watts and then I also plugged in a USB-C charging cable which boosted the speed up to 185 watts and it's about 6.20 a.m. and it's giving a three hour charging estimation so we'll see how accurate it really is and it actually ended up finishing right around 10.30 which was just a little over four hours. Now that the battery is fully charged, one of my favorite tests that I like to perform on my larger power stations like this one that you might have seen in some of my other videos is the fridge runtime test which is meant to simulate a simple power outage scenario where you might want to keep your fridge running to prevent the food from spoiling. So we're going to plug it in at about 11.40 a.m. and we'll see how long it can keep the fridge running. And right now it's giving me a runtime estimation of 58 hours, but this is a really tough thing to estimate because the power consumption fluctuates based on the internal temperature of the fridge. And this can also be impacted based on how many times the fridge is open and closed. It did keep the fridge running until about 7.20 p.m. So the grand runtime total was seven hours and 40 minutes. And one thing that's really nice about this setup is it does beep when the power gets low, which is nice because it gives you a heads up so you can switch it over to something else. Front Hood also sent me over their 100 watt solar panel. So we're gonna take a quick look at that. And then we're gonna run a solar charging test as well. The panel has a nice carrying handle on top and is protected by a nice and thick water and scratch resistant fabric. And on the back, there's a small zippered compartment, which is designed to store the charging cable and the panel's output. And there's also some more room here in case you need to store some additional cables. To open it up, you just need to undo these two buckles and then you can unfold it. There's six panels and I can definitely tell that these are really nice high quality panels and they're made from an ETFE material. And they remind me a lot of the smaller panels that I tested out for from Sunjack in the past. And overall, the build quality feels really great. So if you need a durable panel, this is definitely a good option to consider. Now we're gonna do a solar charging test. And now that the battery is drained on the power station, we're gonna give it a day to see how much charge we can store up on this device. The setup should only take you a few minutes to get going. And it's really quite simple. And having that real-time charging input speed was a really nice touch because it helped me hone in on the ideal angle to face the panel. So overall, I think it's a really excellent feature. I started charging the power station at 9.30 a.m. And at that time, I'm already starting to see charging speeds around 70 watts, which is pretty good considering the angle of the sun at this time of the day. And I stopped the test at about 4 p.m. And at this time, the battery was 53% charged, which was actually pretty decent. So I am pleasantly surprised by how well it performed. 
All right, so now I'm gonna give you my opinion about this power station to help you decide if it's a good fit for you. I've reviewed about a dozen other power stations on the channel so far and just made a little database, which makes it easy to find power stations based on price, capacity, battery type, watts. And I'll go ahead and toss a link down below in case you wanna check that out. One of my favorite metrics here is the price per watt hour. And for this particular model, the price per watt hour is $1.16. And based on the other ones that I've compared it to, it is the most expensive and the average in my database is around 88 cents per watt hour at the moment. However, the price does start to improve when we look towards adding additional batteries to the setup and the cost for adding two more batteries for a total of 648 more watt hours is about $400. So the cost per additional watt hour comes in close to 62 cents, which is much more affordable. And if we combine those two, we'd be looking at somewhere closer to 89 cents per watt hour, which would make this setup a much more competitive offering for those of you who need closer to a 1300 watt hour setup. And the rest of the specs on this device are on par with what you'd expect to see from a power station around $750. With regards to whether or not the solar panels offer good value at $259 at the time of making this video, I'll refer you to the database I just created and an interesting number that I like to look at first is the dollar per watt. And with this model, we come in right around 259 per watt, which is slightly higher than the average cost per watt compared to the other panels in my database. But I do have to say that the quality of the panel is definitely on the high end. So if you do need a good quality panel, you can really rely on this. Anyways, thanks for joining me on this review and let me know what you think of the setup down in the comments below. You can help support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about or purchase anything from this setup, I'd really appreciate you using the links down below. And if you want to check out some of my other power station and solar panel tests, I'll link to a playlist down below as well.